what are some of the ways to control, avoid or mitigate stomach related issues? Okay, so probably need a bit of clarification. What do they mean by stomach related issues? Because this could be a few things. Yes. Um, so it could range from something like heartburn, which is the feeling of, you know, this burning sensation coming up the chest, acid reflux, yeah. uh, that type of thing. Uh, it could be sort of lower abdomen, you get bloating, burping, belching, or it could be even passing a lot of gas, flatulence. Mm -hmm. So it depends what the exact problem is. But I think what we need to remember is, and again, it goes back to what we were talking about just now, is, is traditional medicine talks, teaches us these things really simply. It says, cut your food or divide what you eat into three sections. One third should be solid, one third should be liquid, and one third should be air. And by what, they, what that hadith means by air is keep one third of your stomach empty. empty. Mm. Don't eat to full satiety. Don't eat till you feel, oh, I can't move. I just can't get off the sofa. I can't get off the table. Keep a little bit of space in your stomach. Mm -hmm. And also, I think there is a move now, generally, towards cutting down meat. I, I love meat. I'm, I must admit, mm -hmm. I do love meat. Um, I love my biryani. I love halim. I love nihari. Um, so I am, <laughs> I am guilty of eating meat. But uh, just this, uh, this evening, we were talking. We had dal... Um, and uh, spinach mm -hmm. and I was just saying to my wife we should be eating less meat and we are trying we're trying to eat we're trying to do things eat organic meat or orga organic halal meat uh, and eat less meat overall sure so I think yeah. that would help a lot you know if we cut down a the amount that we eat but be also the meat content of what we Correct. eat. yeah we know um, there's a hadith from the Holy Prophet about the stomach and he says do not make your stomach the graveyard of animals mm. for that particular reason um, and in general, there, as you mentioned, there are different types of meat and not just, you know, what you're eating, but how you're cooking it as well. I think it makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we know as it's ironic because you mentioned about eating to the point where you can't move. It's actually a, a curse or like a, a dua of anger that, the, mm. for example, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make against people to say where he would pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to never satisfy their desire to eat, yeah, where yeah. they could never satiate themselves and fill their stomachs, and we know, of course, that certain individuals in history mm. were, were, you know, suffered from that condition because yeah. it was a, you know, it was a bad, it was a bad way of life and mm. a bad lifestyle to have. Yeah, and I think also, uh, you know, we need to try and say what is in season now. Mm. So you can't expect to have mangoes in winter, and yeah. you shouldn't have mangoes in winter because mangoes are a summer fruit. I love. Mangoes, it is the king of fruits, you know. Um, <laughs> and we argue at home is Pakistani mango, Indian mango better? I'm Indian, my wife is Pakistani, yeah. So we have the argument, but anyway, mangoes <clears throat> absolutely delicious. But you can't eat mangoes in December, you shouldn't be eating strawberries in December, mm. you know, that have been farmed somewhere else in a greenhouse. Why don't you eat seasonal food that is at that time produced from the ground, not flown thousands of miles, being packaged and air sealed so it doesn't get damaged? Um, so eat seasonal food, eat local food, eat stuff that grows out of the soil. Yes. The closer it is to the soil, the more likely you are to feel better. Mm. The more packaging you put around it, the more preservatives and additives you add into it, the less likely you are to feel well. So overall, I think, just to summarise, being organic, being conscious, not just what you eat, but how much you eat. Um, and I think the other, it, there's, in, in my house, we've started a... a a trend of, of eating early so yeah, we try yeah, and yeah, yeah. not eat after for example eight o'clock um and it's you see a difference mm. in your weight in your mood in your tiredness as well mm. does that make a difference absolutely so acid reflux um which is this heartburn type feeling uh is much more common if you eat very late at night because what happens you're going to go to bed and be lying horizontal pretty soon after you've eaten now peristalsis the contraction of the gut, etc., does have a role, but so does gravity. So, sure. if you've eaten and half an hour later you're lying down in bed, then the effect of gravity is minimized. So, the gravity doesn't have the ability to help the food go down. So, yeah, absolutely. Have at least, I would say, two hours probably uh, between eating and then going to bed. Mm -hmm.